Welcome to Catertainment, the show that unlocks the secrets of your cat's behavior. I'm Vicki Smithers. And I'm John Westerby. Today's video is appropriately titled, Oh, Those Crazy Cats. As any cat owner or cat lover can attest, our feline friends can be pretty crazy at times. But what's behind this behavior? Why do cats dart about, sleep when we're awake, scratch, spray, ignore you one moment and crave affection the next? Today we'll also reveal some secrets to changing unwanted behavior and show how you and your cat can gain more enjoyment from one another. We'll be looking at the history of cats. We'll talk with a veterinarian who'll unravel the mysteries of cat behavior. We'll be visiting cats with famous owners. And we'll be hearing from Dear Tabby, a regular catertainment feature that answers letters from cats and their owners at the end of their rope. And there's even more. Stay tuned for several catnip tips on the care, feeding, and well-being of your cat. Let's get the show rolling with a musical and visual salute as Catertainment presents 4,000 Years of Cats in two minutes. It was 4,000 years ago when the ancient Egyptians first began domesticating cats. And it was the beginning of the breeds of cats that do everything from hunt for the evening meal to simply looking blue ribbon pretty. But things weren't so easy for cat-loving pharaohs. Ancient cats weren't quite ready to leave the jungle behind. In fact, things haven't changed much over the centuries. Even today's house cat still has one paw in the jungle. Their behavior is instinctive. When your cat hunts and pounces on a toy during your playtime, they are really working out their instincts as fierce jungle predators. And what owner hasn't experienced their cat's need to scratch everything? Well, that's their way of manicuring their claws and marking their territory. And when your cat stages a huge mock battle with you as their imaginary foe, they are both playing and practicing predatory behavior. Probably the most distinctive part of a cat's behavior is their solitary nature. One minute they crave your attention, and the next you don't exist. But make no mistake, you are the most important creature in their lives. Your friendship and support are your cat's most treasured possession. Even at two in the morning when they've decided it's time to play, whether you want to or not. Here again, their nighttime adventures go back to their origins, as does their love of high places. So the next time your cat does something strange, ask yourself what you'd do if you were a couple of hundred pounds of fierce jungle beast. I think the answer is just about anything I want to. And that brings us to our first catnip tip. How to get seven pounds of fierce jungle beast to behave, at least some of the time. Do cats have a mind of their own? You bet. But there is something you can do to change unwanted behavior. To start, you must be just as clever as your cat. Now take the problem of the cat climbing on everything. Counters, tables, shelves, you name it, it doesn't matter. Your cat needs to have high, safe places to escape to and watch the household. To stop this behavior, put double-sided sticky tape on a piece of cardboard and put it on top of the places you really want left alone. Suddenly, they won't be so inviting. And soon you can remove the tape. Kitty doesn't like it there anymore. Our first celebrity cat, Max, hails from New York City, where he lives with one of America's most famous talkers. Today, he's visiting the set of a television show hosted by his owner, Sally Jesse Raphael. Hi, Sally. Hi, Vicki. Uh, this is Max, who's really got his lines down for uh, being on television. Max comes from the SPCA, and he was a gift from uh, my son to my daughter. He was my, the cat of my daughter who passed away. And when she passed away, Max became an important member of our family. He really rules the roost. Uh, we have the largest dog. We have an Irish wolfhound, and Max uh, can hit him in the nose and tell him off. Um, but there's a soft side to Max. Max sleeps on his back with his legs open and his arms out. Yeah, here. And uh, Max cuddles up with our other cat, Ching Mai, all the time. So he has a, an on-the-air camera demeanor. Uh, Charles Bronson. This is the Charles Bronson of Pussycats. And remember, he has a real gentle side. He has brought a great deal to our life. Now, come on now. All right, and it's your line. Go ahead. Do we love? Do you love me, Max? Well, it's about par for the course. Hollywood is home to many movie stars and many celebrity cats. Four celebrity cats belong to one of America's funniest and most popular movie and television stars. Let's visit them. Hi, John. Martin Mull here, and I'm with my daughter Maggie, and I'm with Barkley in Scamper, and this is little Anne, who obviously is camera shy. Come on, Annie, look at the people. Fine, she's looking at me. That's why I like her. Martin, tell us, 
How did you end up with so many cats? We ended up with this many cats because we firmly believe that every family should always have at least two or three hundred animals around, especially if you have a small piece of property. No, quite honestly, we uh, have always had cats, and Maggie's one of these people, and my wife is too, although she won't admit to it, that can't walk past a, a cage in a, a pet store or a pound without going, oh my God, look at the little, we got to take it home, and we do. And we went to just get this one. We ended up getting these two. And what is Scamper's big trick you were telling me, Maggie? Well, she likes to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, can we see that? Sure. Scamper, turn around and look at this. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. She doesn't know the rest. So I just like to live by the fat cat law. Tell me something, Maggie. If your dad was on TV in a special and the cats were on TV in a special and they were on two different channels, which one would you watch? Probably the cats, Dad. I knew it. This week we have several new products for cats we think you're going to like. The first is an ingenious bag invented by an airline stewardess, Miss Gail Martz, who came up with a good on-the-job idea. Not surprisingly, she invented a better way to transport your cat or small dog on an airplane. It's called a Sherpa bag. This durable padded nylon bag comes in a variety of sizes and colors. There's an over-the-shoulder biscuit bag for cat's treats and for your personal items. And a detachable accessory pouch for your cat's things. It has a reinforced bottom and handles and it will not collapse on your pet. The adjustable shoulder strap doubles as a leash. It includes mesh panels to ensure ventilation and it fits comfortably under an airline seat. It's approved for use on U.S. Air, Northwest, United, TWA, Continental, American, and most other major airlines. What a great idea. You can call the number on your screen for more information. You know, one of the biggest problems owners face is cat box odor and the hassle of constantly having to change the box. So we decided to look into a new kind of litter that's changed everything for the better. The new clumping type of litter. Clumping litter absorbs liquid waste and coats solid waste. When you remove the clumps, you leave clean, fresh litter behind. You almost never have to change the box. Just replace what you have used. For the economy-minded, experience has shown that just one seven-pound jug of clumping litter lasts as long as three ten-pound bags of regular clay litter, making it an economical alternative. Personally, I like the fact that I don't have to lug those big, heavy bags home from the store. Best of all, clumping litter does a great job eliminating the odor problem. What about cats? Scientific studies show they prefer clumping litter. And vets? Well, it's already the most frequently recommended type of cat litter among vets. And you, if you haven't yet, give one a try. Now let's take a look at the best and latest information on cat care from our own Dr. Kitty, Cattertainment's veterinarian in residence, Dr. Lila Miller. Thanks, Vicki. Today, during our first health topic, we're going to talk about claws and how to trim them. You'll learn how important it is to keep your cat's claws in shape, just as you do your own fingernails. Did you know that an overgrown claw can grow into the pad and become infected? That's one reason why you should cut your cat's claws every two to three weeks. The second good reason is that when you keep your cat's claws in shape, you minimize scratching damage to your household possessions. Now here's how to trim. Okay. First, you want to press down lightly on the pad and the claw will become exposed. Using sharp clippers, cut just the white tip. Be careful not to cut into the sensitive area of the pink quick. If you're not certain how to cut your cat's claws, ask your vet to do it the first time and show you how. Now, let's turn to another important subject. A simple home health exam you should be doing on a regular basis. All it takes is five minutes. Gentle petting, a look at the eyes, ears, and mouth, and a flea check. These are the parts of a simple health checkup you can give your cat right at home. Your cat will welcome the attention, and you'll discover that it's quick, easy, and fun for you too. Be sure to do it regularly, and you may head off trouble for your pet. First, always touch and feel your cat all over its body, looking for any cuts, lumps, sores, or scars that need to be looked at further. Your kitty will enjoy the massage. 
Then look into the eyes, the ears, and the mouth, searching for discharges, dirt, swellings or sores. An unusual or foul odor can be the sign of an infection. Then place your cat on a sheet of white paper and rub its fur. Okay, if dark flecks appear on the paper, it's a sure sign of fleas. Now if during your home exam you find a problem, be sure to consult a vet right away. I have six basic rules to share with anyone looking for a vet for their pet. First, ask the advice of friends and neighbors with cats. Satisfied customers will always give you full details on why they like a particular vet. Second, ask the people who work at the local animal shelter for a list of vets. Generally, they can provide you with one. You might try calling the local veterinary association to see if there are any complaints on file. Then visit the vet. Is the facility clean? Are there separate caging areas for cats away from the dog's area? Is there a separate admittance area for cats? Also, there are now cat-only clinics. Maybe there's one in your area. Does the vet provide emergency phone numbers? Or do they welcome your telephone calls? And finally, once you've chosen a vet, be sure to visit once a year for your cat's shots and a general checkup. Thanks, Dr. Miller. We'll all be taking better care of our cats. Now, let's turn to a decision every cat owner must make. The issue is simple. We have an overpopulation of cats. And to bring more cats into the world that can never be adopted or loved is wrong. The solution is to alter the cat. Start by asking your vet when to have your cat done. Generally, it's safe to do as early as eight weeks of age. But be sure to do it before a female goes into heat for the first time, or before the male cat becomes sexually mature. This happens at about six months of age. Is it bad for the cat? No. Will they live full, happy, healthy, normal lives? Yes. And it will make life with your cat easier, too. Spaying and neutering can stop unwanted spraying behavior by male cats and eliminate noisy episodes of crying by females in heat. Check with a vet or your local animal shelter to make arrangements to take this important step for your cat's well-being. Now, on the lighter side, let's find out what all those crazy cats are up to. Soxomania continues here near our nation's capital with the Sox the Cat Fan Club. It seems the presidential cat has a platform of her own. Join the club and get the official t-shirt, a nifty newsletter, a very official membership card. $20 gets you the whole package. $6 a year delivers the bi-monthly Sox the Cat newsletter for children. Here's where to write. Sox the Cat Fan Club, care of PSP, 611 South Ivy Street, Arlington, Virginia, 22204, or call 1703-920-5193. Now it's easier than ever to keep tabs on the first tabby. Cats do amazing things. And Baby, a three-year-old tabby in Cumberland, Rhode Island, is no exception. It seems that while Baby's owner, Richard St. Goddard, was asleep, the house caught on fire. He woke up when Baby hit him about the face. He found his bedroom filled with smoke. Amazingly, Baby followed Mr. St. Goddard around throughout the ordeal. Mr. St. Goddard was treated for smoke inhalation. The house sustained $75,000 in damage, and Baby got a very special hug from her appreciative owner. These days, more and more owners are tagging their tabbies, turning to permanent identification to protect their pets. Look closely and you'll see some cats sporting carefully installed ear tags or small identification tattoos. And high tech is involved too. A microchip scanner can read an implanted chip just under your cat's skin. It's a simple painless procedure and it's worth it. <laughs> the cat's meow in the Big Apple is this swank east side address at 244 East 60th Street. Meander into just cats and browse, browse, browse. There's elegant cat clothing, imported, of course. 
Owners Joyce Lomana and Allison Steele opened their doors five years ago. And ever since, they've received customers from all over the world seeking their exotic cat merchandise. Cat art, cat collectibles. It's all here at Just Cats, awaiting your visit. And now for everybody's favorite cat expert, let's visit with Dear Tabby, our resident animal behavior specialist and family problem solver. Thank you, John, and welcome to another week of family problem solving, where cats and their owners learn how to build happy, loving relationships. This week, I received two interesting letters from cat owners that I'd like to share with you. First, let's go to Scranton, Pennsylvania, where there's trouble in the Brindley household. Our first letter is about Bert, a three-year-old neutered male cat. Bert's owner, Candy Brindley, is a 25-year-old single working female. Let's visit with Candy and see what the problem is. Well, Tabby, I recently moved to a bigger apartment and Bert here keeps scratching the new sofa. Is there anything I can do? Of course there is, Candy. Tabby's cardinal rule of cats is don't make changes of any kind. Cats hate change, but of course that's not realistic. Now, cats love nubby textures. Your cat may be attracted by the fabric on your new sofa or interested in leaving his mark on the new object in his territory. So the best idea is to exercise a lot of patience and employ a few clever tactics on Bert. Try redirecting Bert's scratching behavior to another object. Now, I recommend a good quality scratching post. Get a sturdy one wrapped in heavy rope or sisal. You can buy one at any pet store or make one yourself. Then rub one of Bert's favorite toys with catnip, attach it to the post, and turn your furniture disaster into a new source of fun. In the meantime, defend your new furniture. Try attaching aluminum foil on the arm of that new chair or couch Bert has decided to scratch. Attach the foil with safety pins or upholstery screws. Things should be back to normal soon. Thanks, Tammy. I'll give your ideas a try. Our next letter comes from cat owner Joyce Swank. She is the proud mother of a five-year-old Siamese named Sassy. Joyce, can you tell the audience what Sassy has been up to? Well, Tabby, during Sassy's annual checkup, I confided to Dr. Andrews, her vet, that things weren't going very well at home. Last week, my mother-in-law complained that we had cat odor in our house. Well, Tom and I never noticed it before. I'm a good housekeeper, and I want to do something about this fast. Well, Dr. Andrews recommended one of those new clumping litters. He said that they make it easy to dispose of both liquid and solid waste. Take away the waste and the source of the odor is gone. Well, that makes sense, but Sassy's like her name. She may refuse to use it. Joyce, try a good brand of clumping litter and use a trick I learned from one of my colleagues. Ease Sassy into the new type of litter by placing it in a separate box alongside her old box. Gradually, Sassy will accept the new litter and give it a try. Soon she'll refuse to use anything else. Now try this idea before your mother-in-law's next visit. No, oh, by the way, be sure to buy the rigid metal type of scooper. They're the most effective in scooping all the waste out of the box. Thanks, Tabby. It looks like Tabby's got good advice for both Candy and Joyce. Let's hope she put things right in Scranton and Urbana. And for more good ideas, here's a special segment on Two Toys for Cats. Did you know that when cats play, they work off built-up energy and stress? And it's a great way for cats and owners to stay in daily contact. So plan a couple of regular play periods every day. Ten minutes is all it takes. And it's fun. Well, here are two good toys for a good time. Here's a simple toy that your cat will love, that you can make in minutes. You start with a brand new, never been worn sock and spoon some catnip into the toe. Vicki, if you would help me. Certainly. Great. Mm -hmm. Now fill the sock with cotton stuffing. And you should put enough in to, oh, reach the bottom of the ribbing on the sock. Now, tie a knot in the sock. I got it. Excellent. Perfect. Now, take a string and tie it around the knot. You can make a bow out of it. Thank you very much. Decorate your sock to look like a mouse. Invite your cat to play and watch the fun happen. 
Here's another great toy idea that's even easier to make and it's sure to please. Vicki? Take approximately one yard of heavy, stiff wire, something with a lot of spring in it. Your local hardware store will have it. Wind the wire around the end of a two to three inch piece dowel to serve as a handle. Attach a bit of cloth, ribbon, or twine to the other end. Then, twirl the handle between your fingers. The other end will come alive, enticing your cat to jump, stalk, and pounce on it while you have a good laugh. Well, that's our show for today. We thank our special guest, veterinarian Dr. Lila Miller, and our dear Tabby for their words of wisdom. We hope you've learned a lot about what makes your cat purr and why your cat behaves in certain ways. Remember, a little understanding and patience goes a long way. Taking special care of your cat pays big dividends for everyone. So for all the crew here at Cattertainment, so long until next time. We're going to end our show today with a look and a listen to a song dedicated to those crazy pussycats and their loving owners everywhere. Take care. Put yourself in the pussycat shoes, pussycat highs, pussycat blues, pussycats, strange creatures they be. Kitties don't think like you and me, oh pussycat. He a good friend of mine when I treat him good. He's feline fine, oh pussycat. He a good friend of mine when I treat him good. He's feline fine. Put yourself in the pussycat's boots when he upset the runs and scoots. Pussycat, act like big jungle beast. Hiding and hunting to catch his next beast Oh, pussycat, he a good friend of mine When I treat him good, he's feline fine Oh, pussycat, he a good friend of mine When I treat him good, he's feline fine Pussycat sleeping through the whole day You come home nightfall, you're ready to play Rubbing your leg, swatting at toys Doing wild things and making some noise Oh, pussycat, he a good friend of mine When I treat him good, he's feline fine Oh, pussycat, he a good friend of mine When I treat him good, he's feline fine Pussycat likes the same old routine Five o'clock meal and ten o'clock dream Pussycat ain't partial to change Makes him behave a little bit strange Pussycat, he a good friend of mine When I treat him good, he's feline fine Oh, Pussycat, he a good friend of mine When I treat him good, he's feline fine Pussycat needs some regular stroking Engine running part, finally stuck in Brushing his coat Rubbing his ears, clipping his claws and calming his fears Oh, pussycat, he a good friend of mine when I treat him good He's feline fine, oh, pussycat, he a good friend of mine when I treat him good He's feline fine If you be wondering what pussycat do Things that amaze and please me and you Invite kitty up to sit in your lap Cause nobody loves you like your pussycat Oh, pussycat, he a good friend of mine When I treat him good, he's feline fine Oh, pussycat, he a good friend of mine When I treat him good, he's feline fine When I treat him good, he's feline fine Ooh. Now you be nice to that pussycat